I, I wish I, I wish I could say that I made the name up from tree to chair, but I didn't. I was I was uh, involved in the project all the way from the start, but I didn't make the name. That was Don's. That was Don's. Time, so Don did a good job. But there's a little story behind this. Uh, the Marquette Hospice House was uh, 2012 uh, when it started, and uh, um, on purpose we picked a location out in the woods so it would be quiet and serene for folks who were customers of hospice. Thought that might be a nice location, not with traffic and noise and all that kind of stuff, but, but kind of out in the country. Um, one of the things that happens with that is there's lots of trees around and sometimes they fall down, and one of them fell on the hospice house. So I got a call on Make a Difference Day in 2016. Um, hey, can we come and clean this tree up that fell on? It didn't hit the house, it hit the garage. Um, and it landed on the fence and in the, in the back there had been a swimming pool and um, they filled in the pool and made a garden in, in the pool area and it landed on the fence and on the garage next door. I do have a picture of that, I was dying to show you that. But, um, anyways, um, at, the, at the time um, I called a bunch of our uh, hospital volunteers and other friends that, and, and on Make a Difference they got it all cleaned up and I thought I wonder if we could make something out of that, out of that tree. It was a nice hard maple tree. And um, uh, so I saved some pieces that were four feet long, six feet long. All the base of the tree was big and kind of gnarly and a bunch of branches came off. So where the branches came off, I, I cut some logs that were um, maybe this tall, maybe this tall, but maybe five or six of them. And so I'm gonna save those and see if we can't see if we can't make something out of that. So I talked to the folks at, at the hospice house. I said, like, can I make a table or a chair or something for you? And they they um, um, never came up with, with any, any suggestions. So I said, how about a Adirondack chair? And it wasn't this picture, but, but they said, oh yeah, that's a great idea. So, um, I have a little different style of an Adirondack chair, and let me, let me show you kind of where that came from. I was, um, years ago, my wife decided we needed to have one at our house, and so I went and was serving the neighbors, and they all had different types of them, so I would get my measuring tape out, and I was checking this and checking that, and so I came up with my own design, and I got a, a potato chip box from the grocery store, cut out the pieces, so there's the armrest, that, that's the typical um, Adirondack chair armrest. The key piece of the whole thing is this base piece, and it's like anything else, I guess. You have you, everything, you know, the piece that you don't see really is the sort of key to the whole thing there. So that little angle at the back there uh, is really the key that, that kind of makes the whole, the whole chair work. So that is where it meets the ground. And then here's the seat part. Turn it this way so we can see it on the camera. Here's the seat part, and that curve seat makes it a little bit more comfortable. And this little notch here at the back um, is where the backrest connects. And so I make the backrest. Um, Piece. And here's the top piece of the backrest, and here's the bottom piece of the backrest, and so also that curves. So, so the little curve for your backside makes that a little bit more comfortable, and then a curve um, for your the ones in the picture here. Uh, the, the backrest is real straight. Our daughter, our daughter was in Michigan, and we were out there last summer on, on a, a vacation trip, and we we're paddling in a kayak around a lake that's near her house, and someone had the, the shape of the state of Michigan the back of the chair made like that. So I may make her that for Christmas, but it's like, all right, now, when I make that with the flat back or with the curve back, and it's like, that would be more of a decoration than an actual chair. So, I, so anyway, we'll, we'll figure that out. But so I, for actually comfortable sitting in, I, I like the, the curve back, and here's the bottom, and here's the top, and the top is, is wider because the chair, you kind of want it to fan out a little bit as, as it goes up. Uh, okay, and the front leg. Now one thing about the Adirondack chair, so the front leg, um, needs to be about six inches wide or whatever. And then what you typically see is this little little curved piece that, that goes under the armrest to kind of support the armrest. Um, I came up with a different idea. There was a, um, a couple of smaller logs that were there on the Hospice House Street. So I cut them with a chainsaw, I cut them in half. And so those will be the front legs. So I won't have to, I won't have to make this little curved piece to put on the side since we've already kind of got a, a natural support from that. So really the first step to get the chair put together um, is to connect the leg. And so this is gonna sit on the ground. I brought a part of so I wouldn't scratch up the table so you didn't want to get in trouble. Yeah, yes, I could use some helpers here. Okay. And so the leg's gonna go on the outside. And so um, when, when I cut these out from the tree, I cut them with the chainsaw and I have an attachment that we use um, for our Ask the Expert series last fall to show how you make how you can make lumber from just rock wood. Um, just have a plank of some sort, like a two by eight or two by six or whatever. Um, and I, I have one that's I don't know, maybe five feet long or whatever. And I just put a couple screws down in the log and then uh, the plate bolts on the, on the bar of your chainsaw and, and then you adjust the, 
the width. So you have to make sure that you adjust it far enough so that you're not hitting the screws when you're, when you're going down through with your first cut. Um, but then you just kind of proceed along and you make that first cut and then you adjust the width for your second cut. So I, I cut this about, about an inch and a half and then it's run through the planer several times to get it smooth. So there is a, a couple of, you can still see a few marks from the chainsaw. So we'll make that the inside and we'll make the smoother side the outside. I think ultimately we'll probably want to paint this so that um, we're not going to have that. Um, it, it would be really pretty. The, the hard maple's got a really unusual, interesting grain to it. Um, but I, I think it'll last longer if we paint it. So, okay. So the first step is going to be to connect, connect that. So if you would pull those together, and I'll get the clamp, and then did I bring my measuring tape? I guess it doesn't really matter. So we'll connect those together. And we'll approximate. So the the pieces of the seat are gonna kind of roll along here this way. So we'll attach those first. We want about the same. I'll just make a mental so we can measure like that with my thumb. I make the two of them match up. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. is sitting flat, like on the table. Thank you. 
I was just saying more like more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The next piece will attach the bottom where the back will attach. And so that's what this little knot, thank you guys. So that's what this little knot is just for. So we want to have the outside be pretty close. Can you like bring your leg or you Peter a little bit? Just right about there. And then we'll test to see if those are gonna fit. Yeah, that does fit. Okay. Good. Alright, so there's the bottom of our backrest. So now we want to just eyeball wise to make sure we're pretty we're pretty straight up. And it looks like it might so we want to make sure we're vertical this way. And that looks pretty good. We could use a level, but we don't need one. Alright, so maybe I'll drill a hole to make these screws one easier, then we'll just follow the hole with the I was kind of planning on that as a backup plan. set that has about 10 drill bits and different heads for the different size screws and everything is pretty handy. It's good to have those different places for that. Okay, it's good to the drill hole to be just a hair smaller than the, than the screw. Two screw holes here, and then we'll. see what sort of a gap we want to put in there. So on my little instruction that I write on the, on the side piece, it's like sometimes you need 10, sometimes you need 11 or 12, depending on if you made the chair a little bit larger, but the slats maybe were a little bit narrower. So I made a dozen of them, we'll see how many we need. Always handy to have some spares.
try it. And then it'll be lower in the back, so you'll be more of a reclining, you know, so it's, so it's very comfortable to sit in. It wasn't an upward thing, it was kind of like it broke off. Um, 
and it, it didn't like fall from a storm, it just kind of fell, because it was normally the, you would think it would fall to the east, you know, as it went coming out of the west, and this fell like to the west. It was kind of, kind of strange.
these ones are really going to show in the furnace. So that's nice, pretty one here. Do you have a favorite? That one's neat. Yeah. So we're going to have a few extra slap pieces. Now that screw's poking through, so I'm 
All right, let me find something. Let's use the end of that like we did before. Measure from the end. All right, so looks like that's about an inch or so. Just go back just a hair. Good. Eyeball wise, looks okay. Flush on the ground. Okay. I've got one in here. Did it push away? No, you're good. It's stuck. Okay. A lot of tension on the other side. This one went right in. on that leg. All right. So let me let me attach this one first. Then I'll, then and I'll pull this leg. Then pull out. Okay. So we keep that gap about the same. So this is definitely a two-person job, but you have some helpful helpful hands. That's great. So 
This is, this is kind of eyeball right here. Yeah. That's better there? Or shift it more. Is it okay? Keep it there?
that high here, do we? From this yeah, one? Yeah, that one. That one down just a little so bit. So I take it down, right? Uh, about there. Height wise to match them up. Even more. Looks good.
classic piece of the Adirondack chair, the cool armrest here. Let's see, this, so this is the bottom of that one. This is this one. And so it's going to touch in the back. And so we want it to be flat in the front and touch in the back. So we may need to be making a slight modification, but just for, just for now, um, we can make an attachment right back so it's flat there. So how does that, how does that look? flat attachment on each side. Um, and this little notch here, we'll, I'll probably make, I'll need to get a saw at home, which I didn't bring, and maybe notch that a little bit more so that the arm can tuck over more. So we'll just, we'll just attach just temporarily. Great. How's it look? How's it look? Yeah, you need to do the same thing here. Okay, that side too? Yeah. Just a little bit deeper so we fit around there and then we can get a good flush in that one. So we'll, temp we'll just do this temporarily but so we can have a semi finished product here. Okay. So ordinarily I'd put like, kind of like triangle of screws here, one down each side and one in the center, but we'll just do this temporarily to make that notch. Okay. 
Well, thank you everybody for joining us for the conversation. There's the hospice house out around deck here from the tree that fell on the hospice house. So, there's a couple little tweaks, but we'll get it out there soon. <laughs>